Jarvis, you there? At your service, sir. Gauge heads up display. Check. Report all preferences from home interface. We'll do so. And, and I think that that's one of the reasons I started my channel, um, you know, because I, I was at a point in, in my life at, um, in my late twenties where, you know, I was, I was, you know, at, at that point I was a lot slimmer than I am now, <laughs> you know, a lot slimmer than I am now. I was working a, a sales job where I was making decent money and I kept running into women that had issues going on, whether they were single mothers, um, women that just, you know, didn't, just weren't relationship material. And I was like, not, is it just me or am I going crazy? Cause I'm, I know like I have my standards and boundaries as a man. And, you know, luckily, you know, I, I had a couple of buddies that were single too, doing well, just as well as I was even better. And we were comparing notes and we were like, you know, something is going on here. You know what I mean? And, and so when I first started my channel, um, you know, if you go to the origin, my channel started in 2009, but I didn't start posting consistently until 2015. So, you know, I've been really active for the last five years, but that's where a lot of the things I was talking about was based off of my experiences, people around me. And sure enough, um, slowly but surely, a lot of other men started watching and subscribing and, and confirming not just my experience, but that they were having the experience too. So um, it's very telling that, you know, you know, because a lot of people always want to be dismissive and say, well, maybe it's you, maybe it's you. Yeah. A lot of times it could be you not going to take away from that, but uh, there was also a time where it's not necessarily you, but then it's the environment and the culture that we live in that promotes this uh, toxicity that promotes, you know, um, behavior that is anti-family, you know, promotes, right. um, I don't know if I can curse, but you know, it promotes lustfulness and, and, um, it promotes, you know, premarital sex and, and it promotes looseness among women. And believe it or not, I mean, I know Sean, you know, probably as well as I do, not every man wants to be out there hitting a different woman a week. There are some guys, because at that point in my life, I wanted to settle down. I wanted to have a girlfriend or maybe eventually have a wife, but I was very realistic from the things that I was seeing that there just wasn't enough quality women out there that were wifey material, much less girlfriend material, even at times. Man, uh, it's, it is so incredible to me that, uh, so many men have had the same experience. So many of my friends, um, uh, in, in, in the f family that I come from, you know, my parents are still married. Um, that's a, that's a rarity, but my parents are still together. Um, and the way that I grew up, the kinds of folks that I was around all the time, good, wholesome people and disproportionate number of the guys have had horrible, horrible experiences with women, yeah. horrible experiences with women. Um, and me, myself, I've had several, you know, dozens of terrible, terrible experiences, some of which were prolonged <laughs> and uh i started a, another uh, series of videos called blue pill testimonials <laughs> and uh there's a certain uh youtuber that uh has a series uh called simp tales Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And I, must, <laughs> and I must say that I was, uh, I was somewhat influenced uh, by that. Uh, but just the idea of being able to share these kinds of stories to, to one, maybe prevent someone from making those kind of mistakes. Number two, 
even people that seem like they're totally together. You know, I'm a college professor. I'm a tenure professor. I'm married. I have a son, you know, I work at a church, you know, you know, all of the, all of these kinds of things that make it seem like, okay, well, this guy's really got it together. He must not have had these kind of experiences, but I'm telling you, I've had a lot of these experiences Yeah, and, and most of my, uh, of my friends, uh, they could, they could, they could probably match my stories. Yeah. And, and I don't think that that's, uh, I don't think it's an anomaly. I don't think it's just some weird, you know, random thing that happened where it just happens to be that my friends had the negative experiences. No, it's not that at all. And, you know, that kind of uh, led me to just that sense of things kind of led me to, uh, uh, you know, start searching around to see, you know, I wonder if other people are, are sensing this, you know, and that's when I found you on, uh, on YouTube. Um, but even before then, it took me a long time. I mean, it took me a long time to be able to, and now this is going to, this is going to sound crazy, but I think a lot of guys are this way because we're taught to, to commit and to, and to strive and to, even if it looks bad, you know, struggle through it, Yeah, you know, um, to persevere. We're taught all these things, but you can't do that with the wrong person. Yeah. You can't do, you, you, you cannot do that with the wrong person because uh, they'll turn all that stuff against you. All of the positive stuff that you're trying to do and all the, um, the good motivations, they'll turn it around on you. And it wasn't until, man, I was in my thirties before I actually broke up with a, a girl. Mm. every single relationship every and i'm in my second marriage yeah and this is, this includes my the the breaking up my first marriage every single relationship up until i was in my like mid 30s mm -hmm. the the chick split it <laughs> and <Wow>. and <laughs> every single one and it wasn't because uh you know it wasn't because she was an angel. It wasn't because they were angels. Right. It was because I just refused to quit. Okay. You know, and, and let me, can I ask you a question when you were in some of these relationships, was it, were you dealing with some toxic issues where like disrespect or women, you know, talking oh, yeah. crazy to you or something like that or. Oh yeah. I mean, I've dated a couple of girls that were bipolar. Mm. I've heard you talk about that. Yeah. I know yeah. You know intimately yeah. with that, what that is. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I mean, I've dated girls and they were unfaithful, at least one that I know of per, in, in particular, but I, I took them back. Mm. I mean, I never broke up with them. Yeah. Like they were unfaithful. I just stayed with them. So let me ask you this. When they were unfaithful, did you know about this? How did you find out? I'm just curious. Look, man, look, man one, t one time a girl told me. A matter of fact, I was, I was at her place. Uh, she, she had given me a key to her place. I was at her place. She didn't come home all night. Oh, no. She comes back, comes in the door, sees me sitting on the couch. I was blowing her phone up, trying to figure out what was going on. I thought something happened to her. Yeah. Yeah. And she, first thing she does, she goes right to the bathroom and gets in the shower. Mm. Mm. Whoa. Right. And when she's in the shower, she starts crying and stuff. And I'm oh. like, why are you crying? And then that's when she tells me. Right. And, uh, I mean, it was bad. I mean, she, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into too much more. Well, yeah, detail, you ain't got to. It much. was. It was bad. It. It was bad. But I. I didn't break up with her. Yeah. I mean, she swore up and down she'd never do it again and all that stuff. Yeah. You know. But. Yeah. Um. I don't. I, I don't know. I think. I think now. That's in probably to some folks, that probably seems extreme. Yeah. 
Um, but um, my sense is that a lot of men are like that. They, f- they feel that way. They still feel a, like a responsibility. You yeah, know, I, I, um, think, I think what it is, is that a lot of us are taught that women are princesses and hmm. we can do no wrong. Like the Disney movies, you know what I mean? And the reality is that there are a lot of women that are not like we were taught, you know what I mean? Like these movies and that women are looking for nice guys and they're looking for love. Right. Because in my early twenties, I was baffled. Like, why is it that I was the perfect gentleman? You know, I would show up on a date with a rose and flowers and all types of stuff, but yet I wasn't getting picked. And then you realize that girls like the bad boy, you know what I mean? Yeah. They like that, you know, I don't want to just be stereotypical and say thug, but a guy that has a little bit of edge and all of that. And for the longest time, I didn't understand why, because in my mind, this may sound a bit delusional, but I thought I was the, the perfect gentleman, you know? Um, and, you know, you, you start to realize that a lot of what you were, were taught is, is based on social conditioning where, society builds men to believe in some of these things, because let's be honest with out having that type of etiquette, how are we as a civilization able to move forward? Right. So there, there has to be some etiquette in regards to um, motivating men in regards to that, because when it comes to it, it's like Rolo Tomasi says, we are the real romantics, you know, it's men that it's our imagination that has built civilizations that has, uh, build technology and whatnot. And if you were to take that away from men, what would motivate men then? And this is what's happening now where look at Japan with the herbivore culture, for example, where the, they, they're telling men, Hey, you got to work yourself to the bone, to the death to get a woman. And they, they refuse to do it. And now you are starting to see that in America as well, where men are, are saying the juice isn't worth the squeeze, right? That's why you see men going their own way and things like that. And I think it's, it's disheartening because up until, even for me, you know, when I learned about the red pill and, and game and all of that, there was still part of me deep down that I'd hoped that, well, I could meet a good woman. I can do that. And I'm not saying that all women are bad. I'm not saying that at all. But um, the reality, once I was about to turn 30, hit me that, you know what, the things that we were taught that if you go to college, if you work hard, you get a degree, you'll get you know, a good job with 2.5 kids. No, that's not because when I was coming up once again, that was when the recession had just happened. And a lot of people realize that, you know, this whole American dream isn't really what it is. And so we had to adjust on the fly really quickly. Unfortunately, some people got left and some people were able to adjust eventually, you know? So, yeah. So, uh, so tell me about, um, what, so what sort of threw you, what was there a specific event that caused you to start looking for the red pill? You, you, mm. not, you didn't know what it was called. You didn't, you know, uh, you know, you didn't have a, maybe verbiage for it, but maybe a sense of things that caused you to start looking that way. Yeah. So, so, you know, you know, they, they, they call it sim tales, right. Or sims, right. And even as a simp, um, you know, I was, you know, I, I did, I still, you know, got women. I'm not saying I was a player or anything. Um, I still was going on dates. I was still, you know, in long-term or short-term relationships, what have you. But there were two things that were always a struggle for me. Number one was getting that girl that I really wanted. Right. And number two, I was running into these crazy girls and I didn't know why, like, you know, borderline personality disorder, women, narcissists, you know, the cluster Bs, right? And uh, so basically what happened was uh, in late 2008, um, I was dealing with a woman who coincidentally was a single mother um, who was a former stripper in Vegas, right? But, um, and I was dealing with her and it just wasn't what I wanted. I'll be honest, I wasn't, really attracted to her. She had, she had hit the wall. I mean, she, she, her body was not what it was during her stripping days. (laughs) You know what I mean? And, um, I just, it wasn't what I wanted. So I I tried to end the relationship 
And she just went crazy. She just started talking about, well, I'm pregnant. Are you going to take care of this baby? And, uh, you know, this and that. And I, I knew she wasn't pregnant because all of a sudden she mentioned that she met some new guy who was willing to help her. And even though I was a bit naive, I, I was like, ain't no guy just going to step in and help a woman out with the bait. You know what I mean? And um, of course she didn't end up being pregnant, but after that, I just went on the internet. I don't remember exactly what I searched, but um, I saw all these forums and some of these forums were very PUA ish. And um, the lingo really turned me on because they were really slang heavy. And I was like, yeah. And then I found a forum that uh, is known as soul suave. Now the forum has completely changed from what it was then, but that's actually where Rolo Tomasi used to be a moderator at actually. And me and Rolo had a couple back and forth back then too. He probably, he'll tell you he won't remember, but he does, he remembers. Um, and, and so I, I started to delve into, you know, I mean, it wasn't really known as the red pill then they called it game. Right. And so I, I started to understand why do women flake? Why do women not text you back? And, all these like issues I was having and, and why do you pedestalize the girl that you really like? Right. And that, that's where a lot of my sim tales came from is pedestalizing the women that I really liked and doing too much and this and that, and, and being thirsty as, as the young and say now, you know, the, the word thirsty wasn't around in 2008, I believe, I, I believe it was just, you know, something. Um, and so that's how it, it, I delved into it. And so initially and I mean, it's a long story, but let me abridge it here for you. Initially, it was about women, right? It was about getting girls and, and you know, it was a great adventure initially. And then it tr transcended into self-improvement. You know what I mean? So it transcended not just into getting girls and, you know, getting a girlfriend or getting notches or what, what you, whatever you want to call it, but it transcended into what do you want out of life? Um, and not just with women, but financially, physically, mentally, and spiritually, right? And, um, you know, what happens, of course, is you, you know, for me, you go on this journey and then, you know, you, you're on the straight path and then you fall off, then you, you know, you get back and things like that. But that's, that's how it was for me initially. It was dealing with that woman and, and always constantly dealing with a particular group of women and then it evolved into that. And then, you know, I started blogging in 2010 to 2012, I had a little small following, it was very small. And then I stopped blogging because I, I, I had a spiritual experience then, you know what I mean? And that was just where I just wasn't, I was dealing with another crazy woman, you know, another crazy woman. Uh, and then, um, but I still had an itch to create content and that's where the YouTube started. So initially when I was YouTubing, it was more battle rap type reviews, you know, and then, um, then it transcended from battle rap where I was talking about dating and, you know, talking about one of my videos kind of caught on called don't date single mothers. That video just, you know, I made that video. I did. Here's the funny thing, Sean, about that video. It was, it was, you know, it's September during football season. So right when the game is about to begin, I, I randomly decided, let me make a YouTube video talking about dating because I had just gotten done dating another single mother, right? And so I made the video and then um, I uploaded the video and I didn't, you know, when you make a video, you don't think, okay, it's going to go semi-viral, right? I'm not saying it went se viral, but it, it, it went semi, like it got really a lot of views, a lot of um, comments. And um, that video, once I saw what it was doing, I was like, well, let me keep going. Let me see where I can take this. And, you know, yeah. Dom, the Marco, Marco, the Marco.